Hello friends! The invasion of monkeys always brings incessant threats. According to the California Department of Environmental Protection, the state is facing a significant challenge as the number of monkeys within its borders continues to increase. Current estimates suggest there are approximately 5,000 monkeys, but there are worrisome locations where this number could reach up to 10,000. If you are ready to explore this issue with me, please leave number one in the comments section below. These monkeys, originating from Africa, are becoming an increasingly serious issue. This species of monkeys originated from ancient primates, living about 50 million years ago. They evolved from tree-dwelling apes and gradually adapted to life on the ground. Currently, there are more than 260 known species of monkeys, mainly distributed in tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Monkeys are omnivores, capable of consuming many different types of food, depending on the food sources available in their habitat. Scarce wild monkeys have been moving from forest areas into urban areas in search of food. They climbed over barbed wire fences to enter the city. This strange traveler not only wanders through city areas, but also enters residential and agricultural areas, causing a series of serious problems. The appearance of these monkeys has created chaos on the streets. They often appear on the road, causing unfortunate traffic accidents making travel difficult and dangerous for traffic participants. They do not hesitate to knock on car doors to ask for food. Not only that, they'd also cause losses to farmers by eating important crops such as bananas, apples, and fruits. Moreover, they'd also attack and snatch food backpacks and bags from passers-by in search of food. He even carelessly played with the girl's hair when he met a girl with brown hair passing by.
Although people have tried to chase them away in many different ways, the problem still exists and is becoming increasingly serious. The sudden appearance of a monkey on Highway 100 and one in Los Angeles in 2019 was a strange event, but also a testament to the flexibility and intelligence of this species. This scene has caused long-distance collisions, causing damage to people and property, especially on arterial roads connecting many cities. The appearance of monkeys on the road blocking traffic for hours not only causes congestion, but also instills fear in traffic participants. The increase in monkey invasions in California stems from local people's habit of feeding them. It may have initially been a benevolent act of providing food for the monkeys. But in fact, this has created a favorable environment for their development and adaptation to life in the city. Measures such as installing electric fences can be implemented in high-density locations where monkeys often appear to search for food. This is aimed at reducing the risk that monkeys pose to humans and keeping the city more peaceful. Electric fences, with a wire connected to an outside power source via a transformer, are often used to protect boundaries that you want to keep safe. You can customize this fence by adding a barbed wire to the top. However, this still requires a nearby electrical connection. To ensure fence installation is done properly, you need expert knowledge of the process as well as the factors that affect the longevity of the fence. Although electric fences can last up to 20 years if installed and inspected regularly, there are factors such as weather conditions and power outages that can reduce its lifespan. This is especially important, so owning a backup device is necessary to ensure safety. Iron cage traps are an effective method to prevent the entry of monkeys into agricultural and residential areas. With sturdy construction and escape holes at the top, but no exit at the bottom, this trap prevents monkeys from escaping once they are caught. This helps protect plants and minimize damage caused by them. Iron cage traps not only bring economic efficiency by reducing the cost of preventing and treating problems caused by monkeys, but also help minimize the risks they bring to farmers and communities. According to a report by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, the number of monkeys in California decreased from about 4,000 in 2010 to about 2,000 in 2023 after cage traps were deployed. Local people often transport captured monkeys to veterinary facilities for treatment. Disinfection centers are set up to prevent outbreaks of harmful organisms in the city. 
During this process, equipment and tools also need to be cleaned and maintained properly to ensure safety. Using advanced medical instruments such as skin separators and precision machinery is necessary. The sterilization process requires care and good technique. Before performing minor surgery, the monkey will be anesthetized and their whiskers will be cleaned to facilitate the surgical process. Use the skin separator to create a thin layer in the surgical area. Then use precise technique to perform sterilization by removing the fallopian tube. The procedure takes approximately 10 minutes per case, including preparation and post-operative time. The use of precision and advanced medical instruments helps ensure the sterilization process is safe and effective, while minimizing the impact on the monkey's health and behavior after surgery. After that, the monkey is returned to the natural environment or transferred to conservation areas for care. Many states in the United States, such as Florida, use hunting methods to deal with the problem of monkey infestations. California does not support the use of hunting to exterminate monkeys, as they consider it inhumane and can harm animals in a society where environmental protection and harmony exist. Between humans and nature is considered a top priority. This reflects California's respect for the environment and its animals, as well as its commitment to peaceful and sustainable approaches to the monkey problem. Instead, Californians prefer to look for solutions that protect the environment and reduce monkey invasions in a humane and sustainable way. These methods include improving monkeys' natural habitats and increasing public education on how to live in harmony with wildlife. This reflects an awareness of the environment and animals, as well as a desire to build a community that lives with nature in a sustainable way. Do you support California's policy? If so, Please leave number one below in the comments section. Poor populations in Italy, Canada and the United States are growing strongly, posing challenges in managing wildlife populations in Italy, 
the wild boar population has almost doubled in the past decade, reaching 1 million in 2022 from 500,000 in 2010. Similarly, in Canada, the number has increased from 100,000 in 2000 to more than 1 million in 2010. Meanwhile, in the United States, wild boar populations have increased from 10 million in 2000 to more than 25 million in 2022. The sudden increase in wild boar populations in Italy is mainly due to the development of abandoned agricultural land, providing additional food sources and shelter for wild boars. However, this increase also brings negative consequences. Wild boars are a threat to animal agriculture and transport in Italy. They often damage crops by eating grass seeds and other crops, causing great damage to agriculture. Furthermore, Wild boars also injure livestock, especially piglets, and cause traffic accidents when crossing the road. According to the Italian farmers' organization, known as Cinghela Salvatico wild boars, especially red wild boars, cause 100 million euro in damage each year to the agricultural sector in Italy. This includes losses from crop destruction due to livestock attacks and traffic accidents in rural areas, especially in hard-hit regions such as Lazio, Campania, and Puglia. Hunting wild boar is an important strategy used to control this animal population in Italy. Hunting takes place year-round, but is subject to government regulations. There are two main types of hunting practiced in Italy. The first type is seasonal hunting, which usually takes place from September to December, when wild boars are most active. This allows hunters to use a variety of means such as hunting tools and traps to confront wild boar populations. The second type is government planned hunting, which takes place in areas where wild boars cause the most damage. 
However, before applying hunting methods, Italian farmers often take initial measures, such as planting plants that are not attractive to wild boars, building sturdy fences, and choosing fruit and vegetable crops, suitable tubers. However, these measures are often not effective enough to control wild boar populations. How do you like to hunt? Please leave your opinion in the comments section below to let us know. Success in controlling wild boar requires cooperation between farmers and hunters, with measures such as trapping and fumigation deployed to minimize the impact of wild boar. Hunting. With about 100,000 wild boars captured by 2022 according to CER, is the main method. Organizations are ready to carry out night hunting. Managing wild boar populations and minimizing damage to agriculture and urban areas is becoming a major challenge, especially in rural areas. However, this condition also occurs in urban areas, especially when wild boa is infested. According to information from the Italian Farmers Organization, the South Central Region, especially Lazio, Campania, and Puglia was identified as the site of many hunting events during the Wild War and had the highest concentration of wild hunting. Wildlife warfare and hunting are important management measures to control wild boar populations. Hunting activities are often organized by groups of hunters, with a number of 5 to 10 people, divided into small teams. Before starting, groups of hunters meet to plan, determine hunting times and areas, as well as safety measures using flashlights and thermal locators. in the hunting area. Hunters will use high-quality hunting tools to ensure effectiveness. When all wild boars have been destroyed, large carcasses are collected and brought back. However, 
Wild boar hunting also carries risks, such as the risk of traffic accidents due to wild boars moving near the road at night. They can also attack people if they feel threatened in hunting gear, can affect other animals, such as coyotes and rodents. In addition to hunting, farmers and hunters also use traps to catch wild boars. Trapping usually takes place during the day when they are less active. When captured wild boars are detected, they will be harvested and eliminated. This process extends from rural areas to urban areas, helping to protect farmers' vegetation and property from destruction by wild boars. While trapping is an effective way to control wild boar populations, it also faces challenges. Wild boar are able to avoid traps. Sometimes they can catch other animals, such as wolves and rodents. To optimize results, technical collaboration and coaching are key. At the same time, compliance with safety regulations and countermeasures will help ensure that night hunting in Italy is effective and safe. Farmers are still researching other measures to reduce the number of wild boars and protect communities. Some solutions include reducing food sources for wild boars by planting unattractive plants. Unattractive planting can significantly reduce wild boar interest in areas. These measures not only help protect agriculture, but also minimize damage to urban and rural communities. Additionally, regular trash collection, especially in rural and suburban areas, is also an effective way to reduce food intake for these animals. Litter is often an easily accessible food source, and removing it helps reduce pressure from wildlife, reducing the pressure being placed on new research and measures being developed. To continuously improve the management and control of wild boars, American farmers have implemented a number of precision measures. They have held feral hog hunting competitions in various areas across the country, such as Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Iowa. Such hunting events not only help control wild boar populations, but also serve as a recreational activity for local communities. Did People Kill Them All 2023 contest in Texas is an interesting example of a wild boar hunting contest. Organized by a reputable company, this competition attracts the interest and participation of many hunting teams across the United States.
the competition, requires teams to hunt wild boar and is divided into three important parts with three categories. The individual category emphasizes the individual. The hunter who hunts the most wild boars wins the team category, and there is a challenge for participating teams in which the team that hunts the most wild boars wins. Finally, the biggest wild BS category is about which hunter caught the heaviest wild boar. The prizes for these categories are quite attractive, with the individual category reaching $110,000, the team category $20,000, and the biggest wild BS category reaching $50,000. The Kill Them All 2023 competition attracted the participation of more than 100 wild boar hunting teams from across the United States and was considered a great success with a total of more than 800 wild boar hunted. Although the contest attracted large participation, and was considered a success. It also caused controversy. Some people argue that the competition is cruel and unnecessary, since animals have to deal with their environment. However, supporters of the competition say this is an effective way to control the wild boar population, while also providing entertainment for the hunting and fishing community. Specific rules for wild boar hunting competitions are essential to ensure safety and proper management. For the Texas example, each participating team must have at least two members, and they must possess a valid hunting license and comply with Texas hunting regulations. This helps ensure that the competition takes place safely and legally. In Oklahoma, the Godzilla Jungle Monkey Hunting Contest applies similar rules. Participating teams must have at least two members, ensure they have a valid hunting license, and comply with state hunting regulations. This not only helps ensure safety during the competition, but also plays an important role in controlling the wild boar population. While the competition brings entertainment to the community, it also contributes to wildlife control efforts, especially when wild boar numbers increase and cause damage to agriculture. The competition is not only an entertainment event, but also an effective measure to protect the environment and ensure sustainability for the state's future. In addition to the competition, farmers have also applied various measures such as building fences around farms and residential areas to prevent the intrusion of wild boars.
However, this requires not only financial resources but also high technical knowledge to build a strong fence that can withstand strong attacks from wild animals. The diversity in the application of countermeasures has demonstrated the creativity of farmers in facing the challenge of wild boars. Solidarity and dedication from all sides of the community are key to protecting agriculture, the environment, and ensuring the safety and sustainability of surrounding communities. but also champions of the environment and sustainability of the entire state of Texas. Perhaps we can learn from them about their spirit of determination and ability to find solutions in difficult contexts. Are there any other measures to deal with wild boars that you know of? Share your thoughts below in the comments section if you know of any method that we haven't mentioned or any new method. Now, before we continue this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for any of our upcoming videos. Now, keep watching! Texas farmers have implemented a key strategy to combat the relentless cruelty of feral hogs by using hunting dogs to chase them away. This is a time-tested method that has been used effectively to reduce the number of these destructive organisms on farms, in particular. Cooperation with large and powerful hunting dogs has brought positive results. Dog breeds have been trained to hunt wild boars. They are capable of tracking and chasing pigs effectively, creating pressure and spreading panic in the population. Even though this is a natural and traditional method, it continues to be used with remarkable results. However, the use of hunting dogs requires careful management to ensure effectiveness and safety. Ensuring that these dogs are properly trained and do not pose a threat to humans or pets poses a series of challenges related to the maintenance and management of hunting dog breeds. One thing is certain, the fight against feral swine in Texas requires creativity and diversity in applying a variety of strategies. Texas farmers have shown patience and fortitude in their efforts to address this situation and conserve and protect their Texas farms and surrounding environment. Farmers have also adopted measures to hunt wild boars, an important part of their strategy to deal with this animal. In particular, the control of wild boar populations and the development of wild boar meat markets have created opportunities for Texas farmers not only to protect their farms but also to capitalize on income from sales. Forest pork, technical management, and ensuring that feral hog numbers do not exceed necessary levels is also an important part of maintaining the species as it exists in Texas. So, with these solutions already working to prevent the growth of populations of some invasive species, do you believe there is a better solution? If so, please share your comments and opinions below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support our channel and follow upcoming videos. Finally, share this video with all your friends so they can watch and enjoy it too.